In this example, we want to use the intermediate value theorem, or in other words, IVT, to show that this function, okay, that we're given here, has a zero in the interval from two to four, okay? And then once, so once we show that there's, that there exists a zero, then we can go ahead and find that zero, okay? All right, so, in order to use the intermediate value theorem, we need to be working, we need to make sure that our function is continuous, okay? Uh, in this case, it is. Our function is continuous, okay? And the reason it's continuous is because it's a polynomial. So whenever we're working with a theorem, we always need to state our assumption, okay? So f of x is continuous since it's it's a polynomial okay and we know polynomials are continuous everywhere all right so now uh, we can apply the rest of the intermediate value theorem okay so we need to evaluate the functions we, I'm sorry we need to evaluate the function at our endpoints on this interval okay so we have that uh, we can go ahead and evaluate the function at 4. So that's going to give us 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 3. Um, so this is going to give us the value of 3. Okay, And we go ahead and evaluate the function at the other endpoint, which is 2. So we're going to get 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 3. Okay, So that's going to give us a value of negative 1. All right. Okay, so think about this carefully. Okay, so we have we have our function. Okay, uh, the the function evaluate two is negative one, and the function evaluate four is positive three. So there's a sign change here. Okay. So that's that's an important observation here uh, because. We know that our function is continuous, okay, particularly from 2 to 4. So that means that the function must be crossing the x-axis somewhere between 2 and 4, okay? All right, because f of 2 is negative and f of 4 is positive, and the function is continuous. So that means there must be a point, right? Again, there must be a, the function must be crossing the x-axis. Okay, um, and there's and so that tells us there must be a root. Okay, so therefore, by the IVT theorem, by the intermediate value theorem, okay, there exists okay, there exists some let's call it a C, some C value such that, okay, and C, by the way, C, so C belongs to, so should we should mention that C belongs to uh, 2, 4, such that F of C, okay, belongs to, Okay, so it's going to belong somewhere between minus 1 and 3. Okay. In particular, okay. Or I should say, um, let's see. So there's such that f of c. So in particular, f of c is going to be equal to zero, okay? Okay, because we know the function's continuous again, and it's crossing, it's going from, so it's going from below the x-axis, right, because f of two is negative, and as it's, right, so it crosses the x-axis, and then it becomes positive, okay? All right, so that guarantee is that so by the IVT, that says, okay, 
that our function, there must be a root. Okay, there must be. In other words, there must be a zero um, in that interval from two to four. Okay, so now we can go ahead and find it. Okay, so, all right, so finding our zero. Okay, so now we can solve for, we can solve for the zero. So we want to find the zero, particularly in this interval from two to four. Okay, so we so we can do that just by setting this, uh, setting our function equal to zero. Okay. All right. So then from there, okay, we're going we can factor this. This is going to be x minus three times x plus one. Okay. Okay, so setting each of these factors, uh, sorry, that's x, sorry, x minus one, because we have positive three. Okay, so setting each of these factors equal to zero, okay, we're gonna get x equals to three, and x equals to one, okay? So this is the root that we're interested in, okay? Because it's between two and, oh, actually, sorry, not this one. Um, this one, so three, because it's this one, because it's between, we're interested in the one between two and four, okay? All right, so the the reason this theorem is useful, okay, is because sometimes um, finding zeros, it, it could be a difficult task, uh, particularly if the function is very complicated, okay? So you can think of this theorem, all right? So analogy to this is that, let's say we're looking for oil. Okay, we go out to some land and uh, we want to see if there's oil there. So if we start digging and we waste all the time and resources, and if, if it turns out that there's no oil, okay, uh, then, we, you know, then we've, wasted our, we've wasted money, uh, we've wasted the resources, okay? So, if, so then there's a way to determine that oil, right? So there's equipment that you can bring out there. You can do a survey and do a scan and see if the oil exists there. And if that oil exists, then you can start to bring in the resources and, and you know, and the, and, 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 and the funding to, uh, to dig for the oil. So it's the same thing with this, same thing here. So sometimes with certain functions, uh, the zero may be very difficult to run. Um, back when I was working on, in an NRL, a Naval Research Lab, I was uh, doing some research and uh, we had to, there was a particular function where we had to find the zero for, and we knew it was there, okay? We used this intermediate value theorem, so we know that zero was there. So, uh, so then uh, we could put in the effort to find that zero. So it turned out to, that it took about two or three weeks to search for that zero, because the function is very, very, uh, it was very complicated. And we had to find that zero numerically, okay? Uh, so later in the course, uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you a technique called Newton's method. So Newton's method uses derivatives and that's a numerical, it's a numerical technique uh, that we, uh, that allows you to find the zeros of a function. Okay. All right. So we'll do this later on. Okay. For the Newton's method. But the point here, again, is this, this intermediate value theorem is, uh, it's an existence theorem. Okay. So it tells you, you have some conditions. And if the conditions are met, then the zero, in this case, the zero is exi exists, and then we can go ahead and find it then, okay? So that's what, that's how this, that's why this theorem is so important.